Agora TV. The world is thinking. Uh, in your book, you suggest that Christian organisations uh, head into Muslim communities and evangelise. Uh, given that most of the Christian organisations that do evangelise are pretty fundamentalist, wouldn't you just be replacing one fundamentalist ideology with another? I like the applause. <laughs> and I want to challenge those people who are applauding how they think that they can um, challenge radical Islam in schools, in Muslim centers. You know, how can we win the hearts and minds of those 1.57 billion people to believe in something else other than what the radical Muslims are proselytizing because they are winning the argument and they're working hard to do it. And yes, there are Christians who are radical. There are Christians who are, uh, I wouldn't say just us because they're absolutely not as violent, but intolerant and narrow in their thinking. But that is not the Christianity that I have seen. I know that there is also established Christianity. I had lunch this afternoon with uh, Bishop Rob Forsyth. And the Christianity that he represents, the Christianity that m many people like him represent, today is dormant. They are not going after that demography. They are not challenging the principles and the premises of the radical Islamists. And many people within that demography do not want to become atheists. That is a reality I've come to accept. So given that fact, there would be nothing wrong, and in fact, everything right, and maybe a better alternative to military wars, to bombings and law enforcement officials, to compete for the hearts and minds of those 1.57 billion people in every way we can. The Christian churches, the Catholic churches and the Protestant churches, the moderate ones, are already established and know how to do that. They're just being intimidated either by the PC people or people like you who think that they're all radical. And I think that we should stop doing that. I think that they should start competing. If we don't compete, we run the risk of being engulfed, living in a global order where the radical Muslims win the hearts and minds simply because there's no one else competing with them. And if you want to know how that works, look at the genesis of Hezbollah. Look at the establishment of kindergartens where children, children, five-year-olds, six-year-olds, are taught to hate and to invest in and hereafter. Look at the boarding schools that are established in places like Germany and Holland by radical Islamist Turks teaching their children that all they have to care about is jihad and the hereafter. And if you see how that is expanding and there is no, nothing in front of, no way, those of us who believe in the enlightenment are not competing, the Christians are not competing, the communists are not competing, that leads us to a situation where we are going to have an army of Islamists who are now very young, but who are mobilized to fight in the jihad. And I don't think that that's what we want to do, because if we get to that position, that means only military confrontation. So if we want to avoid military conf uh, confrontation, let us get into the business of converting. <laughs>